Hello, we are group eight, and this is our presentation, How to Age Like Fine Wine. My name is Kiara Roby. I'm Maggie Boak. Brad Schroeder. I'm Ali Hamza. And I'm Maria Everybar. The United Nations has created 17 sustainable development goals that ensure healthy lives and promote well-being. These 17 goals cover a vast range However, goal number three presents good health and well-being. Considering this goal and the question presented by Ripping College, as a group, we decided to try and answer the question, how to age with dignity. Aging is an issue that will affect everyone as they progress in their lives. The average life expectancy for an aging American citizen is climbing, and the need to age healthily is becoming necessary to prevent severe issues arising in both physical and mental health. The issue of aging in the elderly community is an issue across the world. The United Nations defines dignity as being worthy of a human person and providing equal rights to men and women to ensure better life standards. In other words, having honor and respect for individuals. In this video, we can see how people around the world view dignity. Something else I wanted to say. <laughs> to me, dignity basically means dignity. <laughs> dignity is selfless, but it starts with self. They can take away my dignity. Dignity, dignity to me uh, is self-respect to myself. Dignity is an expression. It's an expression and a state of being where we first honor ourselves as unique individuals and communicate or relate that honor to other in unique individuals who surround us in our world. For me, dignity means how you value yourself, your self-worth, your self-respect. Having dignity means you respect yourself and you respect others. People respect you and you respect the poor too. Dignity is software. To me, dignity is about making choices. Human dignity is the most important right from which all other rights are derived. It is the right for a person to be valued and respected for their own sake and to be treated ethically in all aspects. Loving yourself and having pride in who you are, no matter how old you are, is something we need to strive for. Many elderly individuals lose a sense of love for themselves and forget that even though they are aging, it doesn't mean that their life has to be over. Therefore, we are proposing a solution to attempt to solve issues associated with the transition to aging and how to age with dignity. So why do I care or why does this matter to me? Well, everyone ages, as can be seen in the demographic transition created by the Washington Post, which shows a timeline of the percent of population by age in the US from 1900 to 2060. As one can see, the percent of the population at the 75 plus age dramatically increases as time goes on. We will become those elderly people one day, so we need to care and start implementing preventative measures now. Everyone will end up in the position that millions of elders are in already, except for us, it will probably be under worse conditions and situations if nothing is done because of how rapidly our population is increasing. The US, life, the U.S. life expectancy is just over 79 years old, which ranks 46 in the world. This is compared to Canada, Iceland, and Japan. Canada, which on average has a life expectancy of almost 83 years old. Iceland, which is ranked 10th in the world, has an average life expectancy of 83 and a half years. Japan, which has a life expectancy of 85 years old, which ranks second in the whole world. From the 2010 census, almost 50 million Americans are of the age of 65 and older. Our focus is going to be on that growing elderly population in the United States. The average life expectancy in the United States for an 80 year old woman is another 9.1 years and another seven years for men. So trying to help make the people of the age live a life with dignity is something we are striving to do. So far in the United States, 
we aren't doing the best of jobs of making that possible. Multiple states are up to a 60 to 1 student resident to staff ratio at assisted living homes. A nurse in New York, when interviewed, talked about how they have the ability to deal with those ratios, but isn't healthy or safe for the residents or for the nurses due to push guidelines. A median yearly cost of a semi-private room is almost $90,000. Medicare typically covers only 100 days of nursing fees, but the rest is out of pocket and then Medicaid. One of the biggest problems the elderly are facing is loneliness and living in isolation. That may be due to struggling with the death of a lifelong husband, wife, or friend. Ultimately, that can lead to suicide. Of the more than 47,000 suicides that took place in 2017, according to the CDC, those 65 and up accounted for more than 8,500 of them. Men who are 65 and older face the highest risk of suicide, and then adults 85 and older, irrespective of gender, are the second most likely group to die from suicide. The loss of well-being due to illness and chronic diseases often lead to why many people end up in an assisted living home. 80% of older adults have a chronic disease, which include heart disease, cancer, chronic, lin chronic lung disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, diabetes, and chronic kidney disease, and 77% of them have at least two. Depression is another common problem that occurs throughout the elderly community. As many individuals age, they develop prejudices and negative ideas towards growing older and literally towards aging themselves. In 2016, the World Health Organization reported that older people who feel they are a burden perceive their lives to be less valuable, putting them at risk of depression and social isolation. Furthermore, the World Health Organization also stated that older people who hold negative views about their own aging, do not recover as well from disability and live on average seven and a half years less than people with positive attitudes. As one can see on the graph by the CDC, it shows the percentage of users of long-term care services with a diagnosis of depression by provider. As one can see on the right side, nursing homes show the highest percentage of users affected by depression. Social identity and self-worth also play a significant role in depression among elderly individuals. Social identity and self-worth can be affected by retirement, changing habits, marital status, income, and health. In the book, Introduction to Sociology, the authors state, while some people find the transition of retirement easy by picking up new hobbies and joining new groups, others have a hard time with the changing of roles and finding a sense of self-worth for what they are now and this new stage of life. Considering residents who have been placed in nursing homes, they are no longer working, they have been placed in a new home, and they don't have a similar social circle as they had when they were younger. All of these factors play into their loss of social identity and further push them into a depression and loneliness mindset. To date, we have found two specific solutions that have shown promising results impacting well-being and lifespan. The first of these is the Blue Zone study conducted by Dave Buettner, who found a few key places around the world in which the people lived longer and happier lives. The second is Martin Seligman's Perma Plus model, which focuses primarily on human interaction and how interpersonal actions affect our well-being. First, I will talk about the Blue Zones. David Buettner traveled all around the world, and over time he realized that there were some key areas that had pronounced increases in lifespans, which also happened to be places where levels of well-being were also higher than average. These areas, as you can see on the map, are Okinawa, Japan, Ikaria, Greece, the Sardinia region of Italy, Nicoya, Costa Rica, and Loma Linda, California. After conducting interviews and several studies over many years with the residents from these areas, a pattern emerged. Each of the Blue Zones followed nine basic principles known as the Power Nine. So the Power Nine are common factors across the Blue Zones, which can be seen on the image above. 
The first common factor is natural movement, which is incorporating activities into your life to enhance what is already there. Biking to work, gardening, having a labor-intensive job, walking to the, and walking to the store are all considered natural movement. Purpose is next. Those in blue zones have a rather defined sense of purpose in life, which gives them a reason to live for in old age. This is followed by a downshift, which is set time where a person can mindfully react, reflect on their life. This could include meditation, prayer, or even a mindful activity such as walking. Next is the 80% rule, which recommends eating until you are 80% full. This promotes mindful eating and also teaches people to be in tune with their bodies. This is followed by a primarily plant-based diet where meat is consumed only a few times a month. The next principle is wine at five, which is exactly what it sounds like. Most of the residents drink wine daily with dinner, notably red wine. A sense of self-belonging is next. Nearly all of those interviewed in the studies regularly attended some sort of faith-based service. Putting loved ones first is another factor and a key one for our purposes as most elders put in love, put, lived in homes with younger generations rather than in nursing homes or care centers. Right tribe is last, which I like to refer to as friends and chosen family. This essentially means staying connected and finding your people. Perhaps the most interesting about the Blue Zone study though, besides the Power Nine, is the community found in Loma Linda, as a faith-based community from all over the country and world, there are no genetics at play, which is a factor that cannot be completely ruled out in the other Blue Zone locations. This shows that when the Power Nine principles are adopted as a lifestyle change, they work. As a result, the Blue Zones projects were created. These are areas across the U.S. that have adopted the Blue Zone principles into their lifestyles in an attempt to raise the well-being in their communities. Examples of this are having grocery stores accessible to everyone in a community, in other words, eliminating food deserts, teaching activities and healthy habits to kids in schools, organizing community groups to aid in connection, and having workshops to help individuals find their sense of purpose. Overall, there are 42 communities across the United States and over 2 million lives being affected by these changes. While this may not seem very big to us, Dodge County here in Wisconsin is a Blue Zone project, which affects many members of the Ripon College community. However, there are some issues with Blue Zone projects. First and foremost, there is a lack of overall motivation. This cannot be implemented and proved to be significantly successful to a community without wide-scale participation. To many, the Power Nine are radical changes that upset traditional lifestyles, and we simply cannot force a community to do something they don't want to. Secondly, while adapting the Power, while adopting the Power Nine principles is great for improving well-being and growing old happily, it offers little solution to the current problems our healthcare and nursing home facilities are facing with an influx of elderly residents. So, what else could work? The second proposed solution is Karma Plus, which has the elements that promote happiness within the people. Karma Plus is a Sligman's model that has five elements, as shown in the diagram. So P represents positive emotions, E for engagement, R represents relationships, M for many, and A represents accomplishments. accomplishments. So these are five core elements of psychological well-being and happiness. Each element would help us reach a full life of happiness. Institutions like nursing homes can use this model to develop programs and plans that can help elderly people to discover and use new cognitive and emotional tools. That way, older people can focus on finding their happiness and well being in a much easier, thoughtful, and planned out way. So there are some flaws in PermaPlus. First, this is a theoretical model of well-being and it is too simple. Second, there is no element for physical well-being within this model. Hence, PermaPlus model is missing physical well-being. Third, PermaPlus model is more educational 
than being scientific. Our proposed solution is meeting care centers where they are by providing a well-being triage of sorts. In doing so, we would bring in a survey to evaluate the positives and negatives within a living community. We would give our survey to the residents of a care center and even the faculty and staff. This way we could sit down with the faculty and staff and expand further on the positives and negatives displayed in the survey. From this point, we would develop a care team from the college and community to go into the nursing home and see what we can do to better their lives. The survey can serve two purposes. One, to evaluate what is currently going on in the specific care center to evaluate the present needs and to evaluate how younger generations are living their lives to see if they can prevent themselves from deteriorating or physically aging before they get old. The survey would follow paths similar to PermaPlus and Blue Zones and give, the res or give students a means of understanding each of these paths. We would then bring the survey back to the residents and reevaluate how their lives have changed, how their daily living style has improved, and so on every few months so that we may continue to grow and better their lives. We would begin by fixing issues on a need base. We will have undetermined available resources as we are not expecting the nursing homes to bring any funds in or further supplies than needed. We would be working as a volunteer service from the college but not using any funds from the college either. We would start very slowly by simply taking a residents on walks, sitting down and talking or playing games with them and creating a strong bond with them. Often what they need is someone beyond the nurses to care for their mental well-being and care for them as a human other than just caring about their physical vitals. To maintain the sense of well-being and promote it further, we would like to bring our solution across the Midwest and maybe even dream of it being used globally or even just nationally. We would continue to improve surveys as we continue to bring this to various care centers across the Fox Valley and, of course, into the Midwest. We had initially planned on visiting Whispering Pines as a sort of trial run so that we may work with them for a few weeks before delving into this. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we were unable to do so. So following in the, or so in our upcoming semester, we would like to promote a campus-wide involvement and gather more responders so that we can delve further into multiple nursing homes. This project was come up while thinking about in a well-rounded structure that follows Ripon College's mission statement. For example, I am a music major and we also have a biochem major, somebody studying psych and somebody studying exercise science. We all come from various different areas and we'd like to see how our areas of study can bring us all together. To sum up, we think that this solution is going to be a long-term structural change in the college and community. We hope that our proposed solution is to create a program that students will be invested in and will impact the senior population of the town of Ripon, spanning to the rest of the Fond du Lac and Fox Valley areas. So the goal is to create a program that will be taken over by students and advisors after our group graduates. So the participation in this program will give students and faculty of facilities, a greater sense of empathy for older generations. Ultimately, the respons responsibility will rely on dedicated students to utilize their liberal arts education to help better the daily lives of senior citizens. That's it, and thanks for listening. We also have attached our reference slides um, that explains our data and sources that have used. Thank you for listening.